In this video, I'll show you how you can ask your learners a question where more than one possible single answer is correct. About once or twice a year, I see people asking on the user forums, um, you know, is there a way that I can ask a question of my learners and have multiple different answers be considered correct? And, uh, you know, I've thought about this and unfortunately there's no solution that I can think of with multiple choice questions, but I do have a solution that involves the drag and drop interaction. Here on my slide is such an example. So we have, in this case here, we have drag one example of a Canadian province and one example of a Canadian territory to the correct drop targets. Now, in this case here, Yukon and Nunavut are considered territories and the other four remaining answers, Ontario, British Columbia, Alberta and Prince Edward Island are all examples of provinces. Now, regardless of which drag item they bring over to province or which of the two they bring over to territory, as long as they get the type the same, then of course this will be marked correct. And I'll show you how you can build such an example here. So let's start off by building our drag and drop. The easiest way, of course, is through the interactions icon on your toolbar and we'll select the drag and drop wizard. Now, the first thing we need to do is identify our drag sources. And we also want to identify them by type. That's important in this particular situation here. So the first are Yukon. And I'm going to hold down my control key and none of it to make sure both are selected. And I'm going to click this add to type option with the plus icon. And we're going to call this territory. Next, I'm going to click on Ontario, hold down my control key, British Columbia, Alberta, and Prince Edward Island. And we're going to click on the plus icon here to add a new type and we'll call this one provinces. Click OK and now we can click next and now we need to identify the drop targets in this case province and territory and we're going to click on next. Finally what we need to do is identify the correct answers by mapping the drag sources to the correct drop targets and when you've organized your draggables according to these types, it's actually really kind of cool how this works. So if I select Yukon, for example, and drag the arrow over to territory, you'll notice that none of it comes over with it as well. Similarly, we're going to do Ontario and we'll select province. And of course it brings the other two as well. So this is good to go. I can hit finish and that returns us to the usual Captivate interface. We're going to do a few things just to set this up. I'm going to take my submit button and we'll put that roughly in the center. I want it to look similar to my next button that I have on this slide here. So we'll make it the same size and we'll align it to the middle here. And I'll just make it a little bit wider and we'll center it on the slide as well. In this case here, my success caption is showing up in the middle there. So I'm just going to move that up to the top. Uh, we actually won't need a failure caption. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And we'll just uh, resize this message here. We'll just double click on that and we'll say correct. Click next to proceed. And we'll just make sure that's centered on the slide there. I'm going to just look at my timeline real quick. I don't want the next to appear until after the interaction is run. So in the case of drag and drop, the default is to, of course, uh, pause at 1.5 seconds. So I've got the, the next button appearing just after that. So that's fine. I'm going to collapse my timeline now here and we'll take a look at a couple of things here. First and foremost, Let's set up our drop targets to work properly in this case here. So I'm going to go over to format. Now, when I drag one of these draggable items to the province or territory drop target, 
I want them to stay along the bottom because I still want to see the title for province and territory. So I'm just going to make sure that the anchor position is the bottom for both of those. And we're going to go into object actions. We want to specify that we're only going to allow one drag item per drop target here. So I'm going to uncheck accept all, leave the count at one, and set it up to replace in case there's one already in the drop target. It will replace that item. And we'll do the same thing for province here as well. Now let's go over to actions here and on success continue is fine. We're not going to have a failure situation because we're going to give our learners infinite attempts to get this correct. And we're also going to reset the interaction if they get it wrong the first time or the second time for that matter. And the other thing we want to do is we want to go over to the options tab. I like to include redragging the drop source so that if someone changes their mind before they hit submit, they can move that item or another item into its place here. So the thing that we need to do here, again, because we've organized the correct answers by type, we can actually specify what the correct answer is. In this case, as you can see here, it's a combination of all the territory choices going into Smart Shape 109, and 108, of course, is reserved for provinces. Notice here that there's a count. So even though we've set it up to only accept one drag source, it's looking for two territories and four provinces in order to be correct. All we need to do here is change this to one and one. And so long as the drag source is something from territories and something from provinces, this will be considered correct. So let's go ahead and click on OK and let's test this out and see if it works OK. So we'll do a preview in HTML5 in browser. So here we go. So drag one example of a Canadian province and one example of a Canadian territory to the correct drop target. So let's get it wrong first of all. We'll drag Yukon into province and we'll drag Ontario into Territory. You can see it snaps to the bottom of that drop target. Hit Submit. Obviously, those are incorrect answers there. So let's get it correct this time. Uh, let's use a completely different province. We'll choose Alberta and put that in Province. And we'll choose Nunavut for our Territory. And if we hit Submit, Correct click next to proceed and of course our next button is now visible there. If I reset this and let's do a different version of that just to show you that multiple choices or multiple options could be correct in this case here. So for province I'll choose Alberta and for territory we'll put Yukon in there, submit, correct, click next to proceed. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, hire me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that achieves your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.